Today we're going to be discussing body mechanics, which is chapter 18 in your textbook. Here is an overview of the musculoskeletal system. Bones are hard, rigid structures. They bear the body's weight, the leg bones. They allow skill and ease in movement, the bones in the wrist, fingers, ankles, and toes. They protect the organs, the ribs, skull, pelvic bones, and shoulder blades and they allow various degrees of movement and flexibility, the vertebrae and the spinal column. A joint is the point where two or more bones meet. Joints allow movement. The ball and socket joint allows movement in all directions, for instance, the hip and the shoulder. A hinge joint allows movement in one direction, the elbow. A pivot joint allows turning from side to side. There's a pivot joint that connects the skull to the spine. Some joints do not move. They connect the bones of the skull. Muscles move body parts and maintain posture. Voluntary muscles are consciously controlled. For instance, the arm and the leg muscles. Involuntary muscles work automatically, such as cardiac muscle. Body mechanics refers to using the body in an efficient and careful way. It involves good posture, balance, and using the largest and strongest muscles to perform work. Fatigue, muscle strain, and injury can result from incorrect body mechanics. Body alignment is the way the head, trunk, arms, and legs align with one another, or posture. Good body alignment lets the body move and function with strength and efficiency. The term base of support refers to an area on which an object rests. A good base of support is needed for balance. The strongest and largest muscles are the shoulders, upper arms, hips, and thighs. Individuals should use these muscles to handle and move heavy objects and people. Back injury is a major risk when good body mechanics are not used or when the smaller, weaker muscles are used to lift heavy objects. For good body mechanics, one should bend knees and squat to lift a heavy object. Do not bend at, a, at the waist because it puts strain on small back muscles. Items should be held close to the body and base of support. Holding items away from the body places strain on small muscles in the lower arms. Individuals should also avoid unnecessary bending and reaching. It's important to raise the bed and overbed table to waist level when performing care. Push, slide, or pull heavy objects when possible rather than lifting them. Pushing is easier than pulling. Turn your whole body to change direction and do not lean over the person to provide care. Musculoskeletal disorders are injuries and disorders of the muscles, tendons, ligaments, joints, and cartilage. They can be caused or made worse by the work setting. They can develop slowly over weeks, months, and years, or they can occur from one event. Early signs and symptoms of a musculoskeletal disorder are pain, limited joint movement, and or swelling. Some risk factors for musculoskeletal disorders include force, which is the amount of physical effort needed for a task, repeating action, which means doing the same motion or series of motions often or continually, awkward postures, which refers to assuming positions that place stress on the body, such as kneeling, squatting, leaning over a bed, and finally, heavy lifting. CNAs are at increased risk of musculoskeletal disorders, with back injuries being the most common. CNAs are at increased risk because of transfers, trying to stop a person from falling, picking up a person from the floor to the bed, lifting alone, lifting persons who are confused or uncooperative, moving a person up in bed, repositioning patients, changing an incontinent patient, making beds, dressing and undressing a person, feeding a person in bed, giving a bed bath, applying anti-embolism stockings, and prolonged holding of a body part for care measures. Ergonomics is the science of designing a job to fit the worker. It involves changing the task, workstation, equipment, and tools to help reduce stress on the worker's body. Always report a work-related injury as soon as possible.
Regular position changes and good alignment promote health, comfort and well-being. Breathing is easier, circulation is promoted, and pressure injuries and contractures are prevented. A contracture is the lack of joint mobility caused by the abnormal shortening of a muscle. Contractures can develop from staying in one position for too long. Patients should be repositioned every two hours. To safely reposition a person, it's important for the CNA to use good body mechanics. When repositioning the person, again, use good body mechanics, ask a coworker for help if needed, Explain the procedure to the person, provide privacy, wash hands, be gentle when moving the person, use pillows as directed by the nurse for support, provide for comfort after positioning, place the call light and other needed items within reach, complete a safety check before leaving the room and wash hands. Some questions you could ask the patient while repositioning them include, am I hurting you? Please tell me if I'm moving you too fast. Please tell me if you feel pain or discomfort. Do you need a pillow adjusted? Are you comfortable? How can I make you more comfortable? This picture here shows the Fowler's position. It's a semi-sitting position where the head of the bed is raised between 45 and 60 degrees. High Fowler's is when the head of the bed is raised to 90 degrees. Fowler's is 45 degrees. Semi Fowler's is 30 degrees. And Supine is when the head of the bed is not raised at all. This picture shows Supine position. It's the back lying position. The bed is flat. The head and shoulders are supported under the pillow. The arms and hands are at the side. This picture here shows prone position. In the prone position, the person lies on the abdomen with the head turned to one side. The bed is flat. Small pillows are under the head, abdomen, and lower legs. The arms are flexed at the elbows with the hands near the head. This picture here is the lateral position. In the lateral position, also known as the side lying position, the person lies on one side or the other. The bed is flat. The upper leg is in front of the lower leg. The ankle, upper leg, and thigh are supported with pillows. A small pillow is placed against the person's back. This picture here is called Sims position. The Sims position, or semi-prone side position, is a left sideline position. The upper leg is sharply flexed, so it is not on the lower leg. The lower arm is behind the person. The bed is flat. A pillow is under the person's head and shoulder. The upper leg is supported with a pillow. A pillow is under the upper arm and hand. Finally, this picture demonstrates chair position. Persons who sit in chairs must hold their upper bodies and heads erect. The person's back and buttocks are against the back of the chair. Feet are flat on the floor or wheelchair foot plates. Never leave feet unsupported. Backs of knees and calves are slightly away from the edge of the seat. Paralyzed arms are supported. Pillows or elevated armrests are used.